I can't stress enough how important it is to know God for yourself, my brothers and sisters. I cannot stress how important it is to seek God and to know God. Those of you that don't know him and are you feel him tugging at your heart. Know God. Know God. You're not going to find God in a church. You're not going to find God in church community and activities. And I'm not saying that there are not churches that are uh, are organizations that are not good, but you're not going to find God there. Those are supplementary. Those are things you can do or not do and still know God. What do I mean by that? If you never step foot in a church, that does not mean you're never going to know God. God is not a building. There are a lot of people who are going to church and they still don't know him. According to Matthew 7, it says many will say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do miracles? Didn't we do wonderful things? Didn't we prophesy in your name? And he will say, depart from me, I never knew you. I'm not deterring anyone if you are in a ministry that they love God, they're teaching biblical principles, there's nothing wrong with going there. But don't set your eggs in that basket and think, oh, I I've I go to I go to church so I'm good. I go to I'm going to Bible study so I'm good. Because there are lots of people who know religion, but they don't have a relationship with God. It is important that you are studying the word of God. Read your Bible in order. Read it page by page. Start in the New Testament. Take your time. There's no rush to just try to gorge yourself. Start in Matthew 1, then do Matthew 2. Ask the Lord to help you to understand his word. And you keep going all the way till you get to Revelation. And then you go to Genesis and you do the same thing. And you're going to see how when you're reading it in order that there is a message that will really keep you from being manipulated by individuals who are going to put isolated scripture. They take isolated scripture and twist the Bible when if you had read that whole chapter or if you read the book, if you read the previous chapter and you read the chapters after or you read the verses preceding or following, you will understand what that scripture means. Most importantly, it's important to pray and ask God, Lord, open up my understanding so that I can comprehend scripture. Jesus did that. He touched the disciples so they will be able to comprehend scriptures. If you don't understand this, then people are going to be able to manipulate you. A lot of people might have been turned off in the beginning. Oh, she's trying to keep people out of church. Right now, many churches are death traps. Right now, many churches are death traps because they are coddling believers. They're teaching Christians all sorts of stuff that's wrong. They're using the Bible. They're using the word to deceive it, to put loopholes around truth and holiness and righteousness. At the same time, they're using the word of God to condemn individuals, just constantly bombarding them with condemnation and sin and death so that people are terrified of God versus having a um, a fear, which is not terror, but respect, loyalty. They will be telling, destroying people. I'm not saying we're not supposed to speak the truth. People need to know the word of God, but there are people who are abusive and they are, they will shame you. They will pull you to the front and tell your sins and, and do all these things and let you feel like God has not forgiven you. And they're going to take you through their 12 steps of terror and break that person's spirit. You have to know the word of God. Otherwise, you'll be to one extreme to the next. And many churches are set up this way because people have either compromised. Those who were truly called by God has begun 
they, they, they fall into temptation. They have fallen into what the devil fell into. When they see the Spirit of God flowing, the anointing, the gifts, they start to look at people. They start to hear the praises and that are, is really of God, but then they begin to internalize it. And so they change. And then there are those who are never called to begin with. They just set up a church and they know how to play the manipulating games to get what they need for profit. They have profits for profits these days. People are prophesying for a fee. If you don't know God, you're going to be lost. People sometimes feel like they can't know God because they can't see him. How am I? And and not only that, there's so many people who have put have made it where it's you can't reach God for yourself. They'll make it they'll put God on their top shelf. So they're telling you you're not worthy enough to reach him. You're not smart enough to know how to study this Bible. You're not holy enough to for God to hear you. You have to go through me. And I want to let you know that Jesus had boots on the ground, so to speak. He was around everybody. He was reachable. He was teachable. He was able to be accessed and touched. He went the way of the leper. He went the way. He was very much aware when the woman with the issue of blood touched him. He was not too big to, to heal Peter's mother-in-law of a fever. He was not so exclusive that he was not willing to heal the centurion's servant. He knew how to minister to the woman at the well without trying to get her phone number. He's an amazing God. He's an amazing God. He is an amazing God. And guys, you can know him for yourself because he knows you specifically that's why our dna your dna is if you put your fingerprint down nobody else will match it but you god loves you and god knows you so how do you begin by first asking the lord to forgive you for your sins and unrighteousness and to help you you must be willing to be vulnerable to him. Ask him to remove everything that you have ever been taught that did not please him. Even things that you thought you were doing to get close to him. And asking him to start you from ground zero. Show him that you want to learn from him. Open your Bible. If you're not a great reader, the Lord has created so many things. You can listen to the Bible in audio. So you start, you look for the scripture, you start, you listen one scripture at a time. And as you listen, you ask God to open up your understanding. So you understand what it means to show you the truth. Pray and talk to God. It's not a fancy long drawn out prayer. Simple, simply praying from your heart. Learn to dialogue with God. He hears you. The way I sit here and I'm talking to you, you can sit in your room and speak to God. Honestly, and learn to be truthful with him about the things that you struggle with, the things that you're having issues with. And learn to obey him in the little things. When you don't put the cart back and you feel that prompting that you should put the cart back, put it back. If you picked up the tomatoes and you realize you don't want the tomatoes, don't leave it by the towels. Because right before you do it, you feel like you shouldn't. A lot of times we're not realizing how the Holy Spirit prompts us in so many ways. So what does that mean? When I was growing up, every Saturday, me and my brothers would watch karate movies. That's what we call it, karate movies. We grew up in Brooklyn. Every Saturday, I think it would come on about 3 o'clock. Me and my brothers know we're going to be sitting down and we're watching karate movies. And one thing I remember is a lot of times when they were going to get training, 
They want to learn all the stuff, Shaolin, martial arts, you know, go to the Shaolin, the Shaolin masters and all this. They will have them doing some basic things. Probably have them mopping and cleaning, sweeping in the yard. And they would probably want to go into the big things, right? But the master will tell them to go out and wash some pots or try to pick something up. And it seems very mundane. And they don't realize those little movements with the sweeping and the mopping and all of that is really preparing them for the bigger things. And so why do I say that? Sometimes you put that tomato back where it belongs as a part of your training in learning to obey God. Put the cart back where you found it. Pick this up. You don't want this water anymore? Don't leave the water in the book section. When the Holy Spirit prompts you, do it. When the Holy Spirit tells you to put your cart back in the cart stall, do it. Don't be lazy. If you don't if you can't put your cart back if it's too much for you to put your cart back into the cart stall, how can you do greater and bigger in spiritual things? You may say, well, one one is different from the other. No, it's not. It's about who you are. You're going to say, well, over in Walmart, I can break the rules over here. I can break the rules in the Target parking lot. I can break the rules here at uh, in the mall. But when I'm in church, it's different. Nope. You're divided. You may think it's minor. But remember, a little leaven spoils the lump. Can't be a nice person when you're around church people, but then you're a nasty person when you are at work. It does not add up. That is your whole you. Why are you compartmentalized? That this part of you will do be in order in this environment, but over here you can slack off. That's not the character of God. So guys, get to know God. Be willing to confess your sins. Be willing to be to hear and to be willing to hear when God begins to shed a light on things within you and he will lead you. You just have to be willing. He's going to take the rest of the steps. Remember, this is the God that created the heavens and the earth. You're not a difficult project. It's just whether you're willing to obey. It's time to know him because in the end, we're going to stand before God all by ourselves. We're going to stand before God by ourselves. The Lord is not out of reach for you. But if you don't know him, you're going to be deceived because there are lots of people that's talking about God and given their version of what he is. And it's just, it's conflicting. How can you be serving the same God and you all have conflicting, conflicting, conflicting revelations? So rather than be confused and turning, throwing in the towel and saying, I'm done, you need to know God for yourself because none of us are going to be able to stand before God and talk about what the other person did. So if this person that you complained, to, let's say the person that caused you or the group that caused you to just say, I'm done with God, they're in the depths of hell. You basically allow them to affect you, right? And say, God condemns them in the depths of hell. And you're going to stand before God and say, well, those guys caused me to turn away from you. What do you think your fate will be at that moment? I want you to remember this, something that the Lord told me a while back. He says, I know what they've done to you. This was when I was talking to him about some things, things that I experienced at the hands of, uh, you know, rabid believers. <laughs> he said, I know what they did to you, but what did I do to you? Allow me to introduce myself and I will say the same thing to you. God knows what they did to you. But what did God do to you? I know what they said to you and how they treated you, but what did God do to you? The biggest mistake that we can ever make as humans is to tie God to man. We were wrong for that because truly what we committed was idolatry. You looked at that person and you equated them to God. 
You didn't realize that God was sitting right there next to you in that seat saying, do you know me? Are you hearing me? So we can't blame God for people that we um, lionized, people that we placed on higher pedestals that they were not supposed to be. And so when they do wrong to us and they disappoint us, we equate them to God and fall away from God. We were wrong for that. Know God for yourself. Time is winding up. I don't know if you are understanding what's going on. Read your Bible in order so you can see the phase that we're in. Look at the world. Look at what's going on. Look at all the all these prophets. Look at all everybody that's so many people talking about Jesus and God and preaching. And it's conflicting. Who's right? Who's wrong? Look at how sin is being boldly paraded among believers and it's being championed and it's being glamorized. Sin is being glamorized in the house of God. It's, a, it's already being glamorized in the world, but it's being glamorized among believers. It's being aided and abetted. So guys, know God for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. Look in your Bible, listen to your Bible. No one is going to be without excuse. The Bible is in countless translations. It's in Braille. It's on audio. It's in different languages and audio. God is giving every last one of us an opportunity. And for people in places where there are no Bibles and no one has access to go to them because such places exist, the Lord will handle that. The Spirit of the Lord will reveal himself to those individuals or at least to one or two people and when he does that, whether it's through an, an actual visitation to one or two individuals, he will open up their hearts and their eyes to who he is, and the gospel will be, will be us, uh, will be a uh, spread. The gospel will be shared there. Where we can go, God has got it covered. No one would be without excuse. Know God for yourself, guys. It is not impossible. Religion. And deceiving uh, wolves in sheep clothing has made you and I feel at some point in our lives that we can't know God unless we go into this building. We can't know God unless we go through them. And so it causes people to feel tired or intimidated at the thought of studying the Bible for themselves, intimidated at the thought of conducting their own Bible studies at home, having their own prayer why it's hard is because you have been robbed of your dominion and your authority. You've been told to sit on your hands and they you give all your power and all your authority to some person. And then you wonder why they are acting. They get the big head because no man, no one person is, ex is supposed to have that much power. No, all glory belongs to God. So I hope this message makes sense. If there's something you don't understand or know, feel free to comment below or you can reach out to me in my, my YouTube email. You will find that in the about link on my channel. God bless.